So what is going on everybody? This is your boy Yakutis. This is the deep dive. So really quickly, for those who know I've done trending topic uh, shows before with long crazy names. So <laughs> this is it, just with a different name. Just roll with it. Uh, I'm going to try to do a lot of different things, be inventive, all the other stuff. So I really hope you guys enjoy the deep dive and the conversations that we're going to have over here. But I will be pulling a lot of elements from my previous show. So, yeah. <laughs> so first thing I want to do is I want to start with giving flowers, which is how I typically start the previous show. Um, <clears throat> first, want to <clears throat> first want to say, um, well, I guess start off with uh, Javonta Davis, um, boxer who um, was in a um, plane, well, he survived a plane crash, I should say, uh, boxing champ, uh, Javonta Davis. He survived a um, plane crash, and he pretty much vows not to uh, fly uh, private planes ever again. Pretty sure it's very traumatic. I am one where I only fly when I have to. I really don't like flying. Um, and you know, though he is a documented woman beater and all this other stuff, still, you know, that's a life that we almost lost. I hope that he takes this opportunity to reflect on life and to become a better person. Also, Jesse Jackson and his wife Jacqueline Jackson uh, have been hospitalized for COVID, uh, to my understanding, they are still, um, hospitalized at this particular moment and because they are older in age obviously it hits uh heavily for those I, I guess i won't say in descending order but if you are older in age if you have uh any other conditions especially a respiratory uh condition you know it does hit you a little bit harder so you know uh, definitely prayers up i'm not the biggest fan of jesse jackson but still Regardless of that, still, you know, prayers up, you know, let's keep them in our prayers, you know, lift them up, give them uh, their flowers. And also, uh, last but certainly not least, uh, Color Me Pink, I, uh, Keisha Irvin, love her. I love her channel. She keeps me in stitches. I actually have a playlist where the majority of the playlist <laughs> is actually her videos that I tend to watch. And... She recently revealed to us that uh, she has breast cancer and it is very, very sad. And I know for me, it you know, just in general, it hits home because I had a cousin who had um, passed from breast cancer. She had it, um, had her breast amputated because she has uh, two boys and she was trying to stay around for them. It came back even more aggressive and we ended up losing her. So, and I, and I, she, I mean, Cancer itself is no one likes it. Fuck cancer, but I'm just saying like I I it's affected me and my family. So you know when I found out about it, my heart sunk and my heart definitely goes out to her. But I will definitely be praying for her. Fault. If you watch me, I'm pretty sure you watch her. Please keep her uplifted in your prayers. Um, and I know that she can and she will overcome this thing. She has it in her. So, but yeah. And with giving flowers, I always say give people their flowers where they're living because when they are no longer here, there's nothing that they can do with it. But again, let's keep everyone that um, I brought up lifted up in prayer. Uh, all right, so let's talk about... Russell, I about to say Russell Wilson. <laughs> Y'all know my who. Russell Simmons. So a couple of, of um, stories. So um, former Def Jam executive Drew uh, Dixon um, recently had um, retweeted a post from, um, I believe it was Def Jam. Actually, it was according to hip hop. And the initial post said 26 years ago, Russell Simmons presents the show. The soundtrack was was released. What was your what? I <laughs> can't read today. What's your favorite song from this soundtrack? She went on to retweet uh, saying, "TW, I put this entire soundtrack together. Picked every song, pulled the interludes from the film, cleared the samples, typed the credits." 
I was 24 years old and it was the number one album in the country the night Russell Simmons asked me to pick up a demo in his home and raped me. Now, he um, has raped, well, I'll just say allegedly, raped a lot of women and he had escaped to Bali. Well... Mr. Russell was spotted in the Hamptons. And this uh, story came from um, page six. And it says, on Friday, and that would be, uh-oh. So, um, I believe it was August 20th. I'm trying to get my facts straight. On Friday, he was spotted at an angel ball in Southampton, donating a large sum of money to Gabrielle Angel Foundation. Uh, during the auction, again, the thank you from the stage from auctioneer Star Jones. All that being said, this guy is has they they want to um, arrest him, you know, have him tried and all the other stuff, and he flees to Bali, but he ends up in the Hamptons, donating money, and yet he wasn't arrested. Somebody is dropping the ball here, and it could be that you know people are trying to protect him. But again, even though he has done a lot for the community and all the other stuff, still there is no place for a deviant such as him to be moving along. So I just want to know why ain't nobody arrested him. That's all that I want to know. Moving on to the next topic. So Tory Lanez, uh, bail has increased <laughs> after violating his uh, restraining order against uh Megan the Stallion. So what happened was um, a Rolling Loud. Um, I believe it was the baby that brought him up on stage. But right before then, Megan the Stallion had already, you know, gotten off the stage. So now he's brought on. He was supposed to um, stay 100 yards away from her. So it was being discussed. Does that violate, you know, the restraining order? Well, actually, it does. So because that has happened, his bail has now gone from 190000 to 250000 And, um, yeah, now it has gone from him not being 100 yards away from her. He cannot be in any event where she is. And if I was Megan, I would just be petty, <laughs> sure, to every event and all this other stuff, because you're not going to shoot me in my foot and, um, you know, think that everything is sweet. So, again, people making stupid, stupid decisions, and it just, it vexes me. It really does. And speaking of the baby, I'm going to need for the baby to just... Just, just, bro, just, just sit down. Stop talking. Just, just eat your food. If you're gonna say, just get on stage to perform. Don't sit here and try to talk to us. You know, don't, don't do that. And what he really needs, if he doesn't already have one, is like you really need a good publicist to make sure that they tell you everything to say, monitor your social media, make sure they approve everything before you go ahead and you um type it, send it, whatever. So over the weekend, um, the baby was performing at Summer Jam, and I'm getting this story from uh, Russell Snitch, and he reiterated his apology, but pretty much was calling uh, all of those who are against him bandwagoners, and it is quoted him saying, I never in my life meant to offend anybody. Well, whether or not you meant to offend anybody, bro, you did. Uh, you know, and I know, apologize. That ain't even how I rock. But check this out. Other than the people that was truly offended, I feel like the rest of y'all MFers are being crybabies. Now, here's the thing. When the baby got up on stage and said some very, very homophobic and very just ignorant statements, he doubled down for a couple of days. He didn't apologize. He doubled down. It wasn't until that his bag was affected that the apologies came, which is very telling. And that, hap that happens with a lot of entertainers, you know, and I'm saying it as a full spectrum, whether you're a singer, actor, whatever, entertainer. 
But at this point, you are now performing. You have a bag. Dude, just shut up. Just shut up. Because what you're doing is you are digging yourself more of a hole that you're not going to be able to come out of. And, you know, sometimes it's just okay to shut up and stop talking. You know, um, I had a talk with Really B, and she even said the same thing happened with Kanye and him saying stupid stuff like, he stopped talking, people forgot about it, forgave him, whatever, and now he back doing what he need to do. Like, he just needs to shut up because it's getting to a point of no return to where you probably not going to have a career to come back to. Let's talk about some reality TV stuff. So, Real Housewives of Potomac. So, last week, uh, Wendy came through. Okay, Hurricane Wendy. She cleared the whole damn room. I was here for it. And you had Robin Dixon. She went online and pretty much made it, pretty much said in the scene where she was um, talking with Giselle that the whole rumor conversation that was a voiceover. So she truly had no recollection of that cheating rumor. Well, Wendy, I, and I apologize, I don't have the sewer, so I'm just kind of going off recollection. But Wendy had stated that that is a bold face lie. I believe she was talking with the Jasmine brand, I believe. And pretty much she says that she found out about the rumor through um, Robin. And it was through text messages. And Wendy still has sent text messages. So while you may not have known about, I'm sorry, even though the conversation may not have happened, when you sat down with Giselle, she could have just said, we didn't have that conversation. But to say you didn't know nothing about it, well, now you've just been exposed as a liar, which again, are we really, are we really shocked? Are we really surprised? But I can't wait to see uh, what comes of this at the reunion. Speaking of housewives, we have Real Housewives of Atlanta. So Mark Daly is accusing Kenya Moore of using the custody battle as a storyline, sir. Sir. You're absolutely right she's going to. But you, this is one of those where when you get involved with certain people, especially when they're on the uncertain shows, you should already know what comes with it. If you get on a show that has been in existence for a couple of years, you should already know what you're getting into. I think he's just upset that he's about to get dragged. But hey, look, bro, you petty. She petty. It is what it is. And since we are talking about real housewives, let's go ahead and I'll let me bring on a friend right quick. Here we go. All right, so this is the part of the show where I'm asking a friend their opinion. And this time it is really BTV. She has been gracious enough to have me over on her channel quite a few times. <laughs> so I'm glad <laughs> she can uh, have fun with me over here. So since we've oh, already wow. <laughs> so since we've already talked about Kenya and Mark and their little madness, a Ooh. good segue to talk about who is supposed to come back for this upcoming season of Real Housewives of Atlanta. So what really B and I are gonna do, I'm gonna so this is from Tamara Tattles. I'm just going to go through and read the names, and we're just going to talk about it, because I really want to know what your opinion is of who is supposed okay. to be coming back. Okay, so the first person who is supposed to be coming back is we have Portia Williams. Okay, that was, that, that was to be expected. Now, what concerns me is and this is going to come up for somebody else is are we going to get the same thing from her spinoff because what i don't want is like whatever is on the spinoff i don't want that to be real housewives of atlanta so i wonder is she capable of giving us a completely separate storyline for what we're going to get from her reality show but you know here's my question if if the simon situation had never popped off what the hell was her spinoff going to even be about? Was it going to be about her and Dennis co-parenting, her mama, her sister? Like, I don't mean no harm, but they're not that interesting, even the scenes that we see them in within Real Housewives of Atlanta. So now you've gotten this explosion of a storyline mm -hmm. with this whole Simon situation. 
and like you said, is it just going to be more of the same when we get to the regular, you know, um, season? Is it just going to be more of the same? Because the reality of the situation is, like you said, I think most of us are sort of over it at this point. Yep. You know, I mean, I know I am. Oh, well, sorry. Well, Tamron Tattles gave us a little snippet too. So the show is called Pursuit of Portia. And uh, Tamara, Ta Tamara Tattles' um, site reads, Pursuit of Portia is expected to premiere immediately following the first episode of Real Housewives of Atlanta, whatever that turns out to be. Portia and Simon are thirsty as hell. They are being described as ratchet and rowdy, according to someone who has seen some rough cuts. Diane, Portia mom, Lauren, Dennis have standalone scenes. So, I mean, that's like a little tidbit Okay. So I'm pretty, and I also I also heard that by the end of the season, um, old boy is supposed to buy a house for her, put her on the deed, and maybe working towards something with the um, wedding or whatever. So we're going to get that there. But my How thing you know about is, her house, and he don't even have his own house. Okay. I don't know. Again, everything is so much speculation, but that's crazy. I still like my thing is I'll say this now because it's going to blend into somebody else with the real housewives of Beverly Hills, because you know I binged it. We know that Lisa Vanderpump had got her own show, Vanderpump Rules, where right, right. she really wasn't the center. It was just the goings on behind the scenes. Yeah. Yeah, I never really watched it, but it was more about her restaurants and stuff, right? Well, yeah, but I only seen it because binge watching, there was like, I was binge watching, and all of a sudden I see all this Vanderpump stuff. So I'm like, what the hell? So they literally gave us an episode within the Beverly Housewives to kind of, you know, build up that, hey, you might want to mm -hmm. watch this. But that was independent of what she gave us on the show. So again, I'm wondering with Portia what are we going to get because if it's the same thing split between two shows first and foremost i'm really not that inter interested in I'm not. Show. but again i don't know what we're going to get but they claim that we're actually going to get her real reality compared to what we've been getting but okay first we'll first. see i mean they got to bring us something you know um so okay that's portia she coming back okay okay so we got portia I think we both knew Kenya was coming back. <laughs> Kenya is coming back. But let me tell you what I don't want to see from Kenya. Let okay. me tell you what I do want to see and what I don't want to see. Okay. So here's what I do want to see. Well, I'm going to start with what I don't want to see. I do not want another season of the Her and Mark show. I'm sure we're going to get some of it. I'm sure we're going to hear about some of it. But let's be clear. It's only but so many times that you are going to trick me into giving a damn about your situation. Because you can't keep... We're going to try to work it out for the, for my daughter. I want to make it work for my daughter. I want to make it work for my daughter. But then when y'all not on good terms, he's the worst father ever. He never spends time with her. He never does anything. So then that brings me back to why are we here? So that's what I don't want to see. I do not want a whole nother season of her going to the lawyer, telling the lawyer what you know she don't have a prenup and what her options are, what she needs to do. We are past that. And I know that in real life she's filed for divorce, but again, I'm, I don't even care about that part of it. You know, I, I um, do like the fact that we get that we actually well we got to see her her first season on, then last season we didn't, but we get to see Brooklyn now. We do get to see. We're going to see Brooklyn again, and she's older now. I'm sure we're going to see so much more of her part, her personality, and because yeah. and because I know Kenya is the petty. You know what that Kenya is. <laughs> we're going to probably see Brooklyn more than we would have seen Brooklyn had he not tried to block Brooklyn. You feel what I'm saying? More than likely. More than likely. Right. You know, now, here's what I do want to see from Kenya. Okay. I want Kenya in every opportunity that Bravo gives her to drag the dog fuck out of Portia. That's it. That's all. You know, but one thing that I, I ultimately would like to see is, here's the thing. I'm, I'm one of those where if I don't mess with you, I don't mess with you. And it's probably going to be me having an issue with you on site every time. Point blank, any period. But I do understand when it comes to um, a show like this, it does become tiresome mm -hmm. after a while. So I'm going to need for them to have some type of resolution because I can't keep dealing with the whole Portia versus Kenya every 
season. Yeah, but this season, Kenya's got some ammunition as far as this whole situation with Simon. That's what I'm talking about. I'm t Yeah, you're right. The back and forth gets tiresome. But what I'm saying is, Portia, you have given your haters so much more ammunition. Yeah. And I'm just here for all of the different. And I'm not even a Kenya fan. But I just know that Kenya is going to take this opportunity. Oh, she don't have a field day. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I'm, I'm be honest with you. I'm here for it. I'm, I'm here for it. So that's, okay. that's, that's how I feel about Kenya. All right, so the next person, Mastercard Marlo, has got a peach. Listen, <laughs> I am so shocked that they didn't get because I thought they would never give her one. I thought it was it would never happen. Me Just too. let me know how desperate they are as a franchise. Because if you was gonna get a woman a peach, you could have gave a girl a peach ten years ago. I mean, well, she's we, been putting I, in work. I think we both know the reason she never got the peach. We know, but that it, ain't changing. It was her using the F word. When it, wasn't she that. Got it, into it. it wasn't just that. It was them charges. Well, that too. But I'm just saying, like, look, with all the people who got charges on these uh, shows That's right true. now. That's but I, true. I, but because Andy is, I, I'm pretty sure he's one of the exe e executive producers. And her using the F word when she was arguing with Sheree, I don't think that really, you know, helped her out too too much but i really i wonder what we're going to get like i mean i would love to see her being as she likes to say what the, is it a mom tea? is what she called it i want not she's a mom i, I want to see that like i i want to see that now the thing is we we both know the fact that they are giving her <laughs> a peach we know barlo is going to show her natural all of it black mm -hmm. ass yeah. all and, of it so if, if the antics she pulled before, I I, I think she's gonna come with a brand new hand full of tricks just to give it to us. And if you really think about it, even with last season, Marlo gave more than some of the main cast members. That's what I'm saying. Marlo has been doing peach work on a friend's salary. So I'm not listen. I'm happy for her. I'm not mad that she got her peach, but I'm just shocked. That just like I said, that just shows me the level of desperate we've gotten to in my well, well apparently um all the ladies have been put on notice this is their make or break season so if they don't come with it mm. they get so, that, that, that. So it's gonna be a lot of shenanigans Chad. oh yes, definitely in, in in our uh jocelyn hernandez or shenanigans it's, it's gonna be a lot shenanigans. Of <laughs> okay so the next person is candy I know some people feel a way about Candy, but I'll say this. Candy has brought a lot of money to Bravo. She's brought a lot of opportunities. She's one of the front runners. She does a lot of good work. So I can see them keeping her. But going back to what I was saying about Portia and her spinoff with the Candy, um, her show revolving around the old lady gang, I don't want to see those two merge together. Like I want that over there and this over here on Bravo. So uh, I wonder what she's going to give us on the show, because I don't want to see the businesses. You are. I feel like her storyline this season is going to be with this whole plastic surgery situation. You know, she had a breast reduction. Um, yeah. I would love to know why. I would love to know what sparked it. And I know she's yeah. talked about it on her YouTube channel, but I'm saying this is what I would like to mm -hmm. see. Um, she even spoke out about, you know, people being more open about plastic surgery and stuff like yeah. that. And so, I mean, I know that that's not enough to carry a whole season, but of oh. course you're going to splice in the other stuff. They're going to give us the other stuff, but I would love to see that because again, um, I do think that when we start getting into body positivity and we start getting into the whole Instagram phase of where we are today, people, young girls and old girls alike try to aspire to these bodies naturally that are not man-made you know what i mean i mean that are not yeah. natural these are man-made sculpted bodies these are women who pay a lot of money that's the one thing i not to cross shows but that's another reason why i love um beverly hills because those women are real open about all the different procedures that they have they get and all the crazy different like I, some of the plastic surgeries I'd never even heard of before. I was like, oh, that's what that is? Oh, that's why that happened? And so I do think that I'm here for that. Now, so other people might say, oh, that's boring, and I don't want to see that. But I think I, I'm here for that. Now, I think that, you know, they're going to throw in some of the other mess because, you know, they have the whole Todd cheating rumors. 
And so uh, it'll be interesting to see if that will be addressed, the rumors versus, you know, so that'll be interesting. Now, I mean, now one thing I do want is I want the Housewives of Atlanta to get back to showing us family. Okay. Because it used to be where the men, the babies, and everybody was all intertwined. And after Mm -hmm. a while, they stopped doing that with allegations, the men fighting or trying to fight and everything. But it's called the Real Housewives of Atlanta. So so let's see, who else is getting their peach? Drew Sedora is coming back. Now, I saw it for it in the beginning. (laughs) By the time we got towards the middle slash end of the season, I was like, yeah, no, no, definitely. I knew Drew was really coming this, back. But yeah, because you know, if they say Drew was coming back, then they say she wasn't. So I can see them bringing her back. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Hey. Well, she's back. Well, I knew she was coming. <laughs> I mean, that, I knew she was coming that. back. back so, when, I mean, we'll see. When Portia said that she's the only one Uh-oh. that has been that has supported her and been uh, on her side, I knew that's when she was coming back. Yeah, are you okay? I think we having a little. You there? Well, that just shows that um Portia. Your sound is out. Your sound went out. I can't. Okay, yeah, there, can you go. there you go. Can you see me? Yes, no. I can see you there and I can go. hear you, but you're not moving. Okay, wait a minute. Now you're moving. A little slow, but you're moving. <laughs> We're going to have to get this figured out for next time. I'm going to bring you back on. <laughs> but no, um, when it comes to that, um, obviously, Portia needs an ally. So there's mm-hmm. Drew. And that's when, so when, when Portia said that, I knew, I said, okay, well, Drew, she sort of solidified her spot since she's the only one, she said, that's the only one out of the cast that's kind of, you know, congrats, you know, that's been there to support her. So I said, okay, well, so we see the lines being drawn now. Like we see how that's going to play out. So, okay. All right. I'm here. I, I'm with you. I I, was, okay. I liked Drew at the now. beginning of the season, but I didn't see her by the end. So, but go ahead. So I'm going to reveal the very last person. Now, when. When I say it, I'm not going to say nothing. I'm going to give you the floor because I feel you're going to give me one. So the very last person is Sheree Whitfield. Let me say, let me say something. Have you ever had a pair of shoes? You love those shoes. When you saw those shoes, you were like, I got to have those shoes. You bought the shoes. You put the shoes on, and about 15 minutes into whatever you were going in those shoes, you realized your feet fucking hurt. They hurt your feet. You were like, oh, my gosh, I cannot wait. To, I cannot wait to take these damn shoes off. But you don't throw them away. You put them in your closet. So about a year later, you were like, I used to love those shoes. Why don't I wear them anymore? So you put them on again, and about 15 minutes in, you go, oh, damn, that's right. They hurt my damn feet. So when you get home, you still don't fucking throw the shoes away. You put them back in your closet. And a year later, guess what happens? You put them on again because you forgot why you don't wear them. Only to remember they don't fucking fit. That is Sheree. Sheree is the pretty shoe that doesn't fucking fit. Why do we keep bringing her back? Okay, so my feelings, because I don't have an analogy, my feelings is when they they first let her go, Lanethia Leakes told her you are playing for the wrong team, which was Kim Candlestick, Mm -hmm. Grandmaster Zosiac. Like, that's what it was. The first time your ass got kicked off the show. The second time you get kicked off the show is for the same exact person. We don't need history to repeat itself. Now, 
What upset me a lot with Sheree is being a uh, selective bone carrier. If you're going to be a bone carrier, be a bone carrier. Regardless of what bones you bring, don't sit here and pick and choose, which is what got her, that also contributed to her not coming back. And then here's the other thing. I just need for her to be smart. I really do. Like, her coming back, first and foremost, if I'm not mistaken, her fiance is in a completely different state. So how is the filming going to work if that's going to be your storyline? Number one. Oh, well, he got paroled to another state. He can't come. Oh, okay. All right. The second thing is think about the question that Andy asks her every time she's on the reunion. At this point, if you haven't gotten She by Sheree figured out, now is the opportune time to do it because joggers, spring, summer, fall, <laughs> your website was up and now was down. Like, I'm not understanding what oh, is going on. Like, what she should have done. And I think we all have said it. Just do a workout tape. Because you're in shape. Like, it is clear that she does great. You know, she keeps in shape. Listen, if Phaedra can do a damn workout tape, listen, Sheree, you can, okay? Sheree, at this point, like, real talk, at this point, Sheree could actually start a whole online, like, workout situation where people can download her videos and her workout. Or she could do a YouTube channel. Like, there's a lot she could be doing social media or just offer her name at this point. But you're absolutely correct. And the, the, I was going to say, quiet as is kept, outside of Portia, she's actually kind of got the best storyline going with this whole, you know, fiancé felon. But I didn't realize they weren't living together. So, no, that's not going to quite translate. But... This, but this will be the perfect time for her to really sit here and solidify her businesses. Like, the, yeah, if, if Sheree happens to come across this video, you need to sit here and make this season work to where if you never come back again, at least you have something that's going to generate some money. Because you're, and here's the other thing if she does film with him wherever he's at. Then what about Chateau shit told Sheree? Like what, what was it? Again, it's just so many open holes when it comes well, to she's her. still living there. So clearly, whatever business without money the electricity on. In, huh? Without the electricity on. Well, that don't matter. She still she still must be maintaining something. I mean, I don't know. They say that she still owes some contractors some money, so I I, I don't deny it. I, I I see that completely. <laughs> but but I'm, yeah. you know, I'm I'm I you know I go back and forth with Sheree. She Sheree definitely understands the assignment, but like you said, it's all about who she's gonna align herself with. But she absolutely understands the assignment. She knows why she's there. You know, but at least Kim is not there to distract yeah. that. But it'll be interesting to see. And there's no ne there's no Nene and there's no Kim. Bringing Sheree back really is interesting because she's the only person that would have been there from season one now. So now who does she align herself with? Because <clears throat> she, you know, she's had interesting relationships with all of these women. So well, it'll be interesting you. to see how they align up. Well, we shall surely see. Well, Ali uh, B, thank you so much for joining me. I greatly appreciate it. No problem. Thank you for inviting me. I've had thank a good, you. this is a good conversation. And do not forget to join. And yeah, do not forget to join us. Yourself, I'm sorry. Huh? Plug yourself. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'm not plugging nothing. Well, I mean, if you're not subscribed to Really Be TV, please make sure you come on over and subscribe to my channel. I would love to see you over there. But what I was going to say was do not forget, be on the lookout. Um, Those of you who watch the Whether You Like It or Not panel, please be on the lookout for an announcement because due to technical difficulties and weather, um, well, it's, uh, not technical difficulties, anticipated weather issues, let me say that. Um, somebody else, I believe it's going to be Josiah, will be hosting the panel um, tomorrow night because Scotty is anticipating um, Edna will be coming through his area and we're not sure how that's going to work out. So Josiah is going to be hosting on his channel. So be on the lookout for that, you guys. And if you are not subscribed to Josiah, we will all, I'm going to put that in the group chat that all of us need to post his link on our community walls to make sure that everybody, if they're not, because I mean, I think mostly everybody is, but if they're not, make sure everybody subscribes yeah. to Just Live so they can find his channel, so. Yeah, so with that being said, I will catch you guys on the flip side.
Peace out. All right. Thank you. Peace.